Bible, actually the Old Testament, the New Testament, it is just made for one thing and that is the birth of Jesus and the life of Jesus, the gospel message. So I would like to tell you the importance of that gospel message. So from the time that Adam was created and he fell into sin, uh, God has redeemed a plan. He made a plan for us that how we can be reconciled to God. And that plan was Jesus Christ. So Jesus is still important as uh, was important to us is today as he is uh, as it was yesterday. As we read in Romans 8 verse 22, the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until the present time. So it's not only mankind, it is the humankind. So Paul was talking about Jesus' birth. Right now, uh, uh, we can see uh, all the creation and everything. If you see all the signs and the symbols, it means the second, the second coming, the whole nature and the humankind. We are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. We are all groaning for the, for the, you know, the birth, the second coming of Jesus. So even if you see in the Old Testament, the prophets, the kings, and um, the, uh, the priest, there was something missing. They were not perfect. So we see the New Testament, the perfect prophet and the perfect king, that was Jesus Christ. It was all revealing to us. The Old Testament was revealing to us that what is missing and who is perfect. And when Jesus came to this earth, he made everything perfect. So as we know, the election is coming up in America. And if we think that, okay, if this party comes into power, everything will be all right. Or if this party comes into power, everything will be all right. We are, we are, going, we are missing the point. Because uh, even in the Old uh, Testament, when uh, for, at the time of Jesus' birth, the Jews, they were, waiting for, uh, they were waiting for a long time for the Messiah to come. But they thought that the Messiah will come, be born in a king's family. They will be politically, uh, they will, uh, he will become a political leader and he will, uh, I mean, they were under the Roman bondage. And so they thought naturally that he will come and he will free them from the rule. But uh, it did not happen like that. He, he was born in a lowly ma manger. And man's mind could not grasp how God's mind worked. And they could not grasp that Jesus, the Messiah, who they had been promised a long time and who all the prophets had told the Messiah will come, the Messiah will come, that he was born into such a poor family and he did not do anything politically. But they did not know that he was not building the kingdom of this world, but he was building a spiritual uh, kingdom. So we also have to think about our spiritual country. Where are we going to land up? We have to prepare ourselves for that spiritual kingdom that is going to come. We, we need to, so the world is not going to give us what we want. The number one uh, priority in our life should not be anything other than Jesus. So if we have anything else, maybe it might be money or it might be a job, it might be our children. We, we should not prioritize them over Jesus Christ because ultimately either it becomes an addiction for us or the things that we hold so dear onto, they might leave us and we will not be satisfied with, with those things. So Jesus Christ is, uh, should be our number one priority. And the gospel, it's very easy to understand. And it is, uh, it's just that the son of man came to this world to save us, redeem us. And there is no other, uh, there is no other way to God other than Jesus. That the gospel is easy to share and we need to share it with everybody. You, we don't need any theological study or anything else. I mean, we don't need a college degree or something to tell others about the gospel. Um, as, so, as 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 said, for the preaching of gospel is foolishness to the perishing, but to those who are saved, it is the power of God. So, um, you know, if, if we tell it to somebody, they might think, oh, it's foolishness, but it is foolishness to the perishing. But for us, we know how important gospel is in our life. It is for us, it is the power of God. But uh, so if so, if you believe in Jesus, it does not mean that all your all your prayers are go going to be answered and that you whatever you desire, you will get it. it is, that is not what the gospel with Jesus taught us. That is some other gospel. So we, we have to have the notion that uh, the gospel is something, um, you know, we along with. Jesus answers our prayer, but along with that, even though he might not answer our prayer, we still need to hold fast to our faith.
and uh, uh, you might you might know there was this guy called nabil qureshi he was along with uh, he was along with ravi sakaryas and he had converted from a muslim and he became a this thing uh, he became a christian he accepted jesus christ and uh, he was a, pro, a very pro, prolific preacher but uh, he got cancer stomach cancer and then he prayed to god but uh, he died at the age of 34 god did not heal him but he still held on to his faith the faith that he got he he held on to it and so uh, there are also a lot of people who got healed also by by jesus but we should not focus on the healing and the uh, gifts that he gives us we should hold on to his word and we should be ready to suffer for his word so um in the midst of this pandemic jesus and the gospel has become very important for us and uh this pandemic i think uh, i thought maybe that it will get over in 3 months but it's almost going to be a year and so we need that message of hope we need the message of jesus in our life today more than ever so that's my message yeah thank you